wind spikes up, there's no more for I know. Lord God the Father, I ask you to come, be with us during this time. Let the Holy Spirit fill my mouth, Lord God, please, of your word of truth, of life, and the way. Lord God, I pray for the Jehovah's Witnesses, Lord, I pray for the I pray for those that are here, Lord God, that our hearts will be open to your word. Not our minds, but our hearts. For Jesus' sake we pray. Amen. Alright, John chapter 1. We've been dealing with the birth. Looking at different births, looking at the new birth, the virgin birth. And chapter 1, verse 13. Each verse of the Gospel of John is packed with scripture reference. And we go all through the spectrum of Bible and life. It says, which were born not of the blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, and the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So, we've looked at, not of blood, we've seen, the, or we've seen man as a sinner, the wages of sin is death, we're born to die. Christ was born to die. By prophecy, he suffered and died according to the scriptures. Our scripture for death is for sinners. Thank you for having So, continuing on about the Lord Jesus Christ, 1 Peter 2.22. First Peter 2.22. And I don't know who, every time we have a Bible study, who's over there blowing? I just think I know. Satan trying to stop us or, or what? Yeah. Every time. Probably. But it's cheaper than AC. Makes it feel good. So First Peter 2.22. We're going to look at it, it says, For even here unto were ye called. Because Jesus also suffered for us. Isn't it good that Jesus suffered? Let's leave it. One, let's leave it at my say right now. Jesus suffered. Alright. Glory to God. I'm doing reverently, of course. Because I, I don't think it was good that Jesus suffered for me. Even it was good, even it was Friday, which he didn't die on, it's not a thing to call it Good Friday. He died on a Wednesday, and it's not good to call it a Good Wednesday. All the torture that he went through was not good, but look what it said. I didn't finish the birth, verse. Leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was no guile found in his mouth. All right, Christ was sinless, but he suffered. And it says there, leaving us an example. Guess what a Christian life is to be if you're to follow Christ? A life of suffering. All they that live God in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Your family is going to torment you. Your friends are going to leave you. Churches are going to be upset with you. And if you have any public ministry, they out in the public are going to be mad at you. You are not going to be loved by the people who say God is love. And when somebody comes yelling at you, you're because you're knocking on their door. You, I mean, you disrupted them not with Avon, but with Jesus. And they say, "Well, is God love?" Well, yeah, God is love. Why well, ain't you? You show me no love. Just not. You know, they won't show you the love. And the fact is, let's look at Jesus Christ. That little baby everybody loves. They gave him a cross. That was the end result of Jesus Christ and the good that he did and the sinlessness that he did. They gave him a cross. Each of the disciples, the, the twelve apostles, died violent deaths. They were beheaded. They were nailed to crosses. Boil it in oil. Got that one now. John. Stone. Stone. If you read Fox's Book of Mars, which is it's a hard book, but it's a great book on church history, all the different ways that Christians have died. They put you in a sack with a cat, with a skunk, a and with a snake, tie it and throw it in the river, and everybody's defending their lives against the Christian. 2 Corinthians 5.21 2 
So, we're looking at being born, looking at being born again, looking at Jesus. Life is good. Uh uh. <coughs> and not so more if you're a Christian. And we're looking at Christ who died for our sin. We're looking at what Christ came to do today. All right, we're born the virgin birth. We believe that. You're to believe that to be saved. But why? Why? Second Corinthians five twenty one. For he has made him. For he God has made him to be sin for us. Who knew no sin, run back to 1 Peter 2, 22, 23. Who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Alright, there's a verse there saying there's God and there's Jesus. There's that fine line. Isaiah 53. But the purpose of Jesus Christ. He came to seek that which was lost. Luke 19, 17 or 18 says. If you can do your own salvation, if you can work your way to God, then the birth of Jesus Christ was no avail, it was worthless, it was God just wasting time. I don't believe that. Why am I born? I am born because my mother and father came together and, in in, 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 well, you know, the fact of life. That's why I'm here. You can't say that about Jesus. You can't say his mother and father because there was no father but God the Father and it wasn't even a Mary with the Holy Spirit. Why? Why was that promissory birth of prophecy of a miracle that a virgin could see? He was born to be sinless. Couldn't have been of Jacob. I mean, excuse me, of Joseph. He had to be sinless and it's because of me, the sinner. And I was telling that guy yesterday, is God sinless? Oh, yes. Was Jesus Christ sinless? Yes. Now explain to me how he's not God. And he couldn't. You will profess that Jesus is sinless, but you will not profess he's God? You're an idiot. Let me say the word stupid for today for the first time. I try to use that word every day, stupid. It's a good word. You need to bring it back. Some people get offended. But Christ was born virgin birth. He was born without sin. We looked at man, Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. Christ could not have died by the hands of man because he was God. The Bible said he gave up the ghost. All have sin come short of the glory of God, not Jesus. So that virgin birth that we're moving to today as a result of Christ is that Christ had no sin and could not ever sin, though Satan tempted him. He's God manifesting in the flesh without sin. Hebrews 4.15 And then one day, we're going to be made like Christ. If you turn to Hebrews 4.15, and it's amazing how this is coming into what was said yesterday to the Jehovah's Witnesses. He says, well, doesn't the Bible say we are God? Yes, we are. We will be one day. We will live for eternity. Those that are saved will live without sin. We're going to a day when we're going to be like Christ. There will be no more sin in our life. How's that? We will never die, we'll never have supper, we'll never what we are today. Like Christ. We just haven't reached it yet. So Hebrews 4, 15. For we have not a high priest, which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmity, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Now, the high priests in the Old Testament from Aaron and his son on, they were high priests. Once a year in the Jewish history, they would have to go on the Day of Atonement. This is the only time they could go into the most holy place. 
that high priest. He would go in first with the blood for himself because he's a sinner. He'd come back out and he'd go back in with the blood for the sins of the children of Israel. Christ entered into that veil, ripped that veil into two when he died because he had no sin. He's the greatest high priest of all high priests ever to be because he offered himself. He had something that that high priest did not have of Aaron and his children. He had no sin. Now when somebody says, well, and they don't say it this way, I can pay for my own sin. That's an oxymoron because you need someone who's sinless to pay for your sin. And when you go into confessional booth of a Catholic church and you lay all your sins on a sinner, how is that sinner going to exalt your sin? And I whispered into the guy's ear yesterday, and you know what they're doing with altar boys, don't you? Mm. You do know they smoke, you do know they drink. How is that man going to exalt your sin being a sinner himself? Who does he go to for his sin? And if you go all the way to the Pope, well, who does, does the Pope go for his sin? No, you can't. It's a, it's a chain of sinners. And yet when you come to Christ, the sinless, the high priest that offered the blood, he offers his blood, which is sinless. Realize, and we're, we'll come to it, I see here, uh, I saw it. when we come to it, Acts 20, 28, do you realize if you were to take the blood of Jesus, and I don't think you can, and put it under the microscope, it would wow every scientist in the world because it's God's blood. It has no properties of Man, in our blood, cancer arise from our blood. Alcoholism runs through our blood. Diseases, sexually transmitted diseases run through your blood. You are passed on from your father's blood on certain priorities in your life. You are given priorities of your life through your mother's blood. Qualities. Quality. You become like your parents through the blood and you get diseases through the blood. And sometimes you need a blood transfusion from another human. But for sin, you need a blood transfusion from the sick That of no blood to be out here. And here he is, without sin. That's not me. That's no priest. That's nobody but Jesus. 1 John 3, 5. 1 John 3, 5. Windy, windy, windy. And what we're seeing today is the sinless perfection of Jesus Christ. And wouldn't you say we've done 1, 2, 3, this is the fourth verse so far, and we've got six more. Would you not say that this is the classification and the clarification that Jesus is God? No. That's the thing. Who's without sin? Jesus, God. 1 John 3, 5. And ye know. You know. Some people don't know. That he was manifested to take away our sins. There's a reason. And in him is no sin. So, when we confess our sins, 1 John 1, 7, 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness from the one that has no sin. And yet Satan tempted him with the three tools that Satan has after his 40 days of... of 40 days and 40 nights of, of this fast. Christ was tempted throughout his whole entire ministry with anger. He, he, he got angry, but he did not sin. He got frustrated. He slept. He hungered. But he did not sin. They tried to get him to sin. They asked him stupid questions. They asked him questions that would catch him. And yet he answered them correctly and properly. Matthew 27, 24. Do I believe that Jesus Christ is God? Absolutely.
Matthew 27. Matthew 27. Matthew 27, 24. So, I believe Jesus Christ is God more, and I have a book at home of one of my great, 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 great grandfathers that came over on, on the Mayflower and sold whiskey and had gambling problems with the building. I got that all documented in the book at home. But I believe more that Jesus Christ is God than I do. I, I don't know anything about that. I don't have faith to believe in my family. You know why? My family's all sinners, including me. And if the Lord tarries, I hope nobody puts faith in me. As we have these Bible studies, if we were to develop into a, a, a group of people assembled as a church of more people, I hope you will have more faith in the Bible, in God and Jesus, than you do in me. And you see it in churches. They have more in the pastor, in the person, than they do in the sinless one. Matthew 27, 24, I'm a sinner. Now watch this. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult, that they had an argument, they're fighting, they just was made, they're screaming, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, now this is the, this is the Roman governor of the judgment of the kingdom of Rome, who was about to pass a sentence upon a prisoner in his custody. I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See ye to it. Now, even though Pilate put Christ on that cross, the sentence of crucifixion, Pilate four times and Herod once proclaimed, Judas also proclaimed, that man is innocent, though he put him on the cross. The Roman government. You can go find the. You, you can go into history and archaeology. You can find these. They're, they're somewhere. It has been recorded not only by the Holy Spirit, but it's been recorded by man. That man that stands before me right now, Jesus Christ the, of Nazareth, the King of the Jews, Pilate wrote. I've had it with you guys. He's innocent. You. You put him on the cross, and then they have a battle, and Pilate just ends up giving in to the pressure. He's declared innocent by the Scriptures. He's declared innocent by the Holy Spirit. He's declared innocent and, and sinless before God, and the Roman government says, I find no fault with him. John, John 19.4. John 19.4. I tried to put them in order, but this has to be out. The way we're doing this has to be out of order to prove the order. It would be nice if God just laid it all out, wouldn't it? If God said, chapter 1, everything about the sinlessness of Jesus Christ. That would be great. Chapter 2, everything about the sinner of the man. That would be great. Wouldn't that be great? That would be so great when you're dealing with lost people. Wait a minute. That's chapter 5, page 487. Dianetics did that. And you still die and go to hell with Dianetics. They would put in their commercial, oh, you got frustration, page 587. No. But the Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that means not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. We're to study, we're to be ready, the Bible says, to give answer to anybody who has the hope of the calling. And John 19, verse 4. Pilate again. Pilate therefore went forth again and said unto him, Behold, I bring forth I bring him forth to you, Jesus, that you may know that I find no fault in him. Then came Jesus wearing the crown of thorns. There's Pilate's words with Jesus. No fault. You got insurance policy with that term, no fault. Where did they get that from? They got it out of the body. Why not say, all right, you got this car accident, you were innocent of the charge. 
Why is it no, no, no fault? That insurance policy is supposed to bring you the pilot of Jesus Christ. It's supposed to remind you. So you're sitting behind the insurance desk, and the guy says, Oh, this is our no fault policy. You just open up the door to show him the no fault of Jesus Christ. But then we, two hours later, we're sitting in the chair, Oh, I could have said that. I missed it. You know? Men take from the Bible. So Isaiah 53 9, Isaiah is a great chapter. Isaiah 53. It's the suffering Messiah. Isaiah 53. Don't mess with Isaiah 53, please. I said that with reading. Isaiah 53, 9 will take us into the future of Jesus standing before Pilate. I wish this Bible don't have... Oh, wait a minute. It does have this. This one says 712 B.C. with a question mark. Well, I like that. So, approximately... 700, approximately 740 years later, we're going to read Isaiah 53 9. Approximately 743 years, thereabouts, I could be wrong. You've got Jesus Christ standing before Pilate in Isaiah 53 9. And he made his grave with the wicked. He, die, he dies on a cross between two thieves. There's Calvary. And with the rich in his death. That was Joseph Armenian's tomb that he built for himself. You realize the tomb of Jesus Christ is the only tomb ever that could be rented after he was used. And you could find no body in it. He left that tomb just like Joseph Armenian left it. Empty and ready to be used again. If you wonder if Joseph was buried after that probably. But verse 9, because... Wait a minute. He made his grave with the wicked and with the rich his death because, this is the reason why, Calvary and the burial. He done no violence. Why? He died because he did no violence? That's kind of an oxymoron, isn't it? And didn't I say it with the suffering in 1 Peter 2.22? Because Jesus did right? Because Jesus was sinless? Because Jesus loved everybody? They gave him the cross. And because you love people enough to tell them what the Bible says about their lives and where they're going, they just absolutely would love to punch you in the face. I had somebody trying to do that a couple weeks ago. So, let's finish. No violence, neither was any deceit found in his mouth, and yet it pleased the Lord God to bruise him, to put him to grief, when thou shalt make his soul for an offering for sin, there it goes again. There it is. He suffered and died according to the scriptures, one of them, Isaiah 53, 9, that he might suffer for us our sins, not his, as he stands before Pilate, and Pilate says, I find no fault. You're innocent, Jesus. The prophecy said he had to die. Why did Pilate send him home that afternoon? Because Jesus had to die. His wife even said, I've had many dreams, many dreams because about of this just man. Wow. Yeah. So, when somebody gives you the four letter F bomb because you're a Christian, or they tell you to look up, or they get angry in your face. Remember everything that Jesus. And if you are able to go home that afternoon and, and love your kids and love your wife and have a meatball sandwich, remember Jesus did not go home after that. It took him three days and three nights and then 40 more days to go back to be home with God after all that. He didn't finally go home to Acts chapter 1. How well was that? He shows up in the upper room and he's got to rebuke the disciples because they were not waiting for him at the empty tomb that Sunday morning. When he told them, three days and three nights I'm going to be resurrected. Oh God, Jesus, who's the greatest of us? Oh, you didn't listen, did you? He upbraided them in that upper room after he rose from the grave because they shouldn't listen. 
The women came to the empty tomb bringing spices for what? A dead body. No one listened to him. Oh, I've been in this ministry for, oh, no one's listening, no one's taking part. Neither did they listen to Jesus and comprehend it. Nothing new under the sun, the Bible says. First Peter 1.18 Listen, when you, do, when you are a Christian and you do what the Bible tells you to do, you're going to have the same results that Jesus had. I had, I had a police officer come up to me one day, just innocently, right? He goes, where, where is your group of followers? Where is your mass of people, I think he used? 1 Peter 1.18. And I said respectfully, said officer, I treat that with respect. I said, how many people followed Jesus in his ministry? And one of them sold him out. One of them cursed and hollered and took off. Nine others, we have no idea where they went. And yet John the beloved disciple went to the grave, I mean went to the cross of Jesus. Listen, they're only going to treat the true Christian as they treated the Christ. Some people, they expect as a Christian to be lifted and exalted above Jesus Christ. Really? Then you're not doing things right. And if people love you in your ministry, you're doing something wrong. The Bible says, if thou shalt live God, uh, uh, if thou shalt live God, then thou shalt suffer persecution. That's a commandment. So 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver. God ain't going to take coins. Imagine Judas throwing his 30 pieces of silver. God said, I don't take that. Even the priests didn't take it. They threw it to bought a field for, for poor people to be buried in. Amazing. Or gold, or and gold. God ain't going to take the gold standard. We don't even have a gold standard in America anymore. If you would be lucky to find a piece of paper money, say, uh, 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 silver. For your vain conversation, your content, what you do, received by the transitions of your father. All right, with verse 18 is what we can't do to for salvation. It's not who you are, it's not what you are, it's not what you have. But, verse 19, with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb, the lamb of God would take away the sin of the world, John chapter 1, without blemish and without spot, who verily foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifested in these last days for you. Christ was sinless, he's that lamb of God, he's that picture of, of the... Passover land, he's without sin, he's without spot, and his salvation was long before Adam showed up. Before Genesis 1-1, God says, I'm going to make some men on this earth, men and women, and they're going to disobey me. I'm going to need some way to redeem them. And it's not going to be blood of goats and rams or a man priest. It's going to be by my son, and it has to be sinless perfection. That was ordained before the world was ever made, Genesis 1. So God has already put forth forever, from forever, Jesus Christ. Hebrews 9.14 Hebrews 9.14 914. Win, win, win. We'll start in verse 11. We read the whole chapter. Verse 11. But Christ, being come and high priest, we've already looked at the high priest of good things to come, 
by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, heaven, not made with hands, heaven, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered once in the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of heifer sprinkled and unclean, sanctified to the purification of flesh, all right, of all that in the law, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, that's the spirit that we read, we're going to read in Luke chapter 1, that Mary became impregnated by, by that spirit, offered himself without spot, sinless, to God, purge your conscience from dead work to serve the living God. Look at the salvation we have there. Removed our dead works. Everything we thought that we were good and happy, we didn't think we were good and happy, even though we thought maybe the, the grave was that's it, no eternal life. All those dead works came alive by Jesus Christ without spot. Not the, not the blood of animals or anything like that, but the, that was only a sign that was only a to show you Christ Jesus. My redemption is on the sinless one of Jesus Christ. You say, well, there's God and there's the Son. Yet, yeah, but there's only, God is the only one that can be sinless. Read the false gods. Read the, the Greek false mythology and the, uh, the Roman mythology. Those gods were sinners. They had lust in their eyes. Zeus would fall in love with other goddesses. Jesus said, whosoever looked upon a woman to lust after his heart has already committed adultery. Nice God you are. You charged with adultery. They lied to each other. I've studied all those mythologies. I almost got into it wrongly. Thank God God put me to a point that today I can explain enough and not go overboard. So Romans chapter 8, verse 3. Romans chapter 8, verse 3. How dare you proclaim that Jesus is not God and teach people as such? And there's, there's people on this earth. They think they are God's gift. They think that their poop don't stink. They believe they are God and yet they sin. Everyone's going to stand before the sinless one one day, saved or lost. If we're saved at the judgment seat of Christ, how's that? We Christians are going to stand before the sinless one that bought our redemption. Those that are lost are going to stand before the great white throne judgment. And who's on that throne? God. Who is God? Jesus. Boy, would the Jehovah Witness be shocked at that moment. Imagine God tell him, you're a liar. Why? You said you're a Jehovah Witness. Yeah. I'm Jehovah, and you did no witnessing about me. That you said wrong things about me. <coughs> the very name Jehovah Witness will bring condemnation against you. I'm a Jehovah Witness. I tell people about Jesus Christ. But I don't call me Jehovah. I call it Jesus. God manifests in the flesh. Romans chapter 8, verse 3. Here we go. We talked about this with a family last night about the law. I follow the commandments. Okay, name all ten of them. Ask them that. Tell them to find it in the Bible. I do. Somebody, oh, I'll keep the commandments. I'll head in my Bible and tell me where they are. Well, if you're going to keep them, at least you know where they are. You live in Daytona Beach. Well, tell me how to get to Daytona Beach. Oh, I don't know. I had a guy one time. We're out witnessing. My son and I, we're out there. He goes, well, I go to church. I said, well, what church do you go to? Oh, I said, where is that? Ooh. He's just lying to me trying to get me up. But it's amazing. Romans 8, 3. For what the law could not do, the law can't do it. Look at that, look at that, look at that. You say by the law, the law can't do it. In that it is weak through the flesh. Jesus said, if you look upon a woman, never mind doing the actual act, if you look, you're an adulterer. God sending His own Son, capital S, in the likeness of sinful flesh. Now look at that. There's 100% God and 100% man. 
and for sin, condemn sin in the flesh. So Christ, the sinless one, came in a human body as God. And say, look, here I am. I lived the life of a man. Because Job says one day, God, you have eyes as such as I have. Do you feel God like I feel? God could say, no, I don't. And the day that Jesus was born, now God can do it. God, have you ever cried at Abraham's wet, uh, funeral? Did you cry when Jacob died? Did you cry when Isaac died? Did you cry when Adam died? No, I didn't cry. God, did you ever cry for a lost, for a man that died? Yes, John eleven thirty five. Jesus wept. That's the first place that God ever wept, and He wept at a graveyard of His beloved friend, and He knew what He was going to do that day. He was going to resurrect that body. He knew it, and yet He cried, knowing what He's going to do. How's that? Wow. He slept on back of a boat during the storm. Well, He was hurt because the uh, people were hurt. But I'm just saying, He knew Mary what He was going to do. Martha was so sad, right? But the fact is, he cried knowing he was, he's going to be alive and I'm going to have dinner with him the next, next time. Because the next chapter, he's sitting down with Lazarus. Glad they didn't bomb him. That would be kind of hard. But Christ Jesus, the sinless one, who is God, came in as flesh as I am, but without sin. He never sinned. So the question that some people will raise, Luke chapter 1, 35, Luke chapter 1, verse 35, could Jesus have ever sinned? No. Was he tempted with the possibility? Yes. Luke 1, 35. But did he ever sin? No. So when they say that Jesus had an affair with Mary Magdalene and all the other nonsense, all that, that's nonsense and that is blasphemy against Jesus. So we've looked at the virgin birth. From the virgin birth we're looking at a man or a child that grew up to a man, that in him was blood that had no sin, no imperfection. Jesus would never have had cancer. And you've got to wonder, did he ever get a cold? He couldn't have. He did not have the blood that causes disease or Ill illnesses or anything. We'll see that in a moment. Jesus Christ for Mary was that perfect child on the world. Never mind the block. And yet the Bible does not reveal anything of his childhood except for 13 years old to us. You gotta leave your mind to speculate. And yet Mary had to change his diapers, I would assume. Did no, Jesus never had the terrible two. If there was ever a cookie or a wafer stolen in, in Mary's house, it was never Jesus. How far did it go? The, the sinless one as a child growing up in the Bible never tells us. It tells more about his suffering than death. So Luke chapter 1, and the angel answered verse 35. It said, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest, which we looked at, shall overshadow thee. Therefore, also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. There is no man, human man, that impregnated Mary being the child of Jesus. That is the virgin birth. That is the power of God with the Holy Spirit. And no man had anything to do with it. We're going to look at one verse, but we're going to look at it again next week. Because we've got more verses. We're going more into the blood of Jesus next week. But let's go to one last place, Acts 20:28, 20, And we'll pick up next week, too, Lord willing. And this has been perverted in the New World Translation. They have taken the blood of God. I, I forget what nonsense they had. 
but messing with Bibles right now, you're going to mess with what we just studied today about the blood of Jesus. Acts 20, 28. And you can ask Tracy and Rachel, I will throw this verse out much when I'm talking about Jesus Christ and his sinlessness. So verse 28, Take heed therefore unto yourselves, talking to the disciples, to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost, oh, there's the Holy Ghost again, has made you overseers, talking about the people who's overseeing the church, to feed the church of God. That's important. Church of God. That's not churches of God. That's not the churches of God, the religion. I, I had to lay, someone lay that on me one day. It's the church of God. That's you, 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 and me. Those who are washed in the blood, that's us. We're the church. It's not nails. We're the church even though we're in the gazebo right now. Feed the church of God, which he, God, that he runs back to God, has purchased. All right, here's a purchase. Remember we, we read, you can't purchase with gold or silver. Remember we read that? Okay. So how am I bought if it's not gold and silver? With his own blood. Now I ask you, I ask you a simple question that could not been answered yesterday. Where on earth did God in the history shed his blood according to Acts 20:28, 20, which is not in the New World Standard Bible? Where would God spill his blood? And I had that Jehovah Witness tell me it was Jesus Christ on Calvary, but he could not reference that verse to Calvary. It said God purchased. Purchased with what? His blood. Whose blood was upon Calvary? Jesus. I say God. There it is. And if your Bible messes with that verse, then you're messing with the deity of Jesus Christ. That's why they mess with that verse. So you can say Jesus is not God. When Christ's blood on the thorns, on the nails, upon the cat of nine tails, I already said thorn. And that spear that pierced his side and floods came out water and blood. Acts 20, 28 says that flood is, not was, is the blood of God. So if you want a good Jeopardy question for a thousand points, God's blood is the answer. I wonder what kind of questions they would pose for that. The blood of God is the blood of Jesus Christ that flowed in those veins and was spilt out for Calvary. By what have we learned today? For our sins. You say the, blue, the blood of bulls and goats, weren't they under the curse too with Adam? You know how they were, you know how animals are under the curse that they're not these righteous things? Because they have to be killed to be sacrificed. The wages of sin is yeah. Bad dead. The Bible says Jesus gave up the ghost. Now, all actuality, who killed Jesus? Was it the Romans or was it the Jews? Actuality, Jesus gave his life. He gave up the ghost. The body. The not, body. Not but the Romans and the Jewish people wanted him dead, and according to scriptures, if you want, you're charged with the death. So that's the story, that's the way, that's the biblical, and we'll pick up next week again in Acts 20, 28. We're going to go more with Jesus' blood. There's more to talk about. Wonderful, matchless grace of Jesus. Are you washed in the blood?